take a look at your unit discussion board in a little bit more detail. This is a similar problem. It is the same problem you are working. The problem you are working is found in your textbook, page 430. I also recommend that you go and look in the doc sharing portion of the class, where you find a template that, much like this, with just different values, will allow you to um, fill out all the portions. You're welcome to attach the template to the discussion board or copy and paste your results into the discussion board prompt. This will just help make sure you answer all of the um, all of the questions. We're going to look at rolling a dice this week and we're going to roll it for this example until number two comes up. Now some of you have dice at home from children's games or whatever and you're welcome to use a physical dice. If you do not have a physical dice there are several several um, simulators out there attached as a link to one of my favorites. It just I like it because it's purple. It's easy to use. Um, it's virtual dice. We want to choose a six-sided that's a normal cubed dice. And when you choose the pop up will come up, this is your virtual dice and it will load up. All you have to do is click on it to roll it. Now I'm going to roll this until I see the number two. Five rolls, six, seven rolls. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that in my data. Seven rolls for the first time. I would do it again, and I would do it again, and I would do it again. We'll do it again. One, two, three. So the next one would be five. And you're going to complete the whole table. Um, for this particular example, I'm going to complete the process 26 times. So I fill my values in. Um, for all 26 trials, we call them independent trials, and this is what I got for my data. This is what I'm going to use for my question. I'm going to start by doing a copy and paste of this data by ring. Oh, that's not what I want to do. There we go. And choosing copy. I'm going to go over to an Excel sheet. Go to a blank one and paste my data in. And you notice what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to choose um, to be pasted as a table. No matter what option you choose, it's just a formatting option. So whether or not you ha choose to have this formatted with the dark bar or um, whether you choose to have it with the um, you know, as the Excel table is irrelevant, it will still work the same way. We're going to find two descriptive statistics. We're going to find the mean and the standard deviation. So I'm just going to type those labels in to remind myself of what I'm finding. Now, to find the mean, let's see if we can get this all here for you. I'm going to click in the box and insert a function. I want to search for the word average. It's the first one that comes up. And I just want to be sure to highlight all of my data. It will ignore anything with a number in it, so that's fine. You don't have to worry about those black boxes or anything. It will actually go ahead and ignore those for you. And I'm going to click OK. It comes up with my mean right there. I'm going to do something similar for standard deviation, only instead of searching for the average, I'll search for the standard deviation. And I do want to use the... Um, the, the value that comes up that's standard deviation of a sample. Depending on your version of Excel, it could be STDEV or STDEV.S. It doesn't matter which one. It, some of you have different versions of Excel, so it may be either one. The STDEV or STDEV.S. They both work the same way. And I'll do the same thing. I'll go ahead and I'll just highlight all of my data points, and this will give me the standard deviation, which I'll need later. All right, so we have the mean. In my case, it's 6.38. Mean equals 6.38. That was my um, average before the number 2 was observed based on my data. And it's important to note you all will have different means because you all have different thing on how many times it took you to roll your dice.
The population standard deviation for the number of rolls before a, this should be a 2 because that's what I'm doing, is observed as square root of 45. Use this to a 95% um, confidence level for a z interval. Now what you want to look at with a confidence interval is the formula on page um, 411. Now, there's a couple things we need for this formula. First, we need the population standard deviation, and they tell me that this is square root of 45. I'm going to go ahead and take my calculator out, whether it's a physical desk calculator or whether it's a um, actual calculator on my computer. I'll pull up the one on my computer. It's under the accessories tab in Windows, so here it comes. And you may have it in um, standard view. So I'm going to put in the 45 and the square root. Square root of 45 is 6.71. So I'm just going to write that down. I'm going to need that. A 95% confidence interval means I need a what we call a constant or a z value. You can find these constants on page 410 of your textbook. It's a nice little box in the middle that outlines the constants depending on the confidence level. I'm going to use a 95% confidence level for my problem. Be sure to double check your problem for your level of confidence. And you can see it says right there that the z critical value is 1.96. The last thing we need is the number of data points. In my case, I have 26. So I'm going to go ahead and find what I call my margin of error first. By taking my constant and multiplying by the standard deviation, 6.71, over the square root of n. Let's take a look at how to do that on something like a Windows calculator. I'm going to clear out what I have. I'm going to divide 6.71 divided by square root of 26 and I get 5.099. Well I'm going to go ahead right now and just multiply that by 1 0.96. Let's try that again. 6.71 divided by 26 square root. Times 1.96. And you'll notice what I didn't do the first time was press the enter sign in between. It's very important. 6.71 divided by 26 and the square root. And then I want to push the equal sign. That was the step I missed the first time I did this. Then I can multiply by 1.96 and get my margin of error of 2.58. To get my confidence interval, I want to take my average, 6.38, subtract my margin of error, and add my margin of error. So what I see here is that the confidence interval, or 95% of the time, if we were to do this experiment, the average would be between 3.8 and 8.96. The population mean is um, 7. Does my interval contain 7? Yes, it sure does. 7 is in between the lower bound, 3.8, and the higher bound, 8.96. Now let's take a look at creating the t-interval. Before I do this, I am going to need a constant for the number t. And this is um, most easily derived in Excel, so let's go over there. To get my t-value, I'm going to find the t-value, and I'm going to use a function. I'm going to insert a function and search for t-i-n-v. It stands for t-inverse. Where it says probability, I'm going to put in essentially the probability of failure. 
Since I'm doing a 95% confidence interval, I have a 5% or 0.05 failure level. My degrees of freedom will be 25. It's the number of data points minus 1. I had, 20, um, I had 26 data points. I subtract 1, and we always subtract 1. We get 25. This returns my T constant, or my 2.06. From here, the process is much the same as the Z interval, except I do not use the population standard deviation. I use my standard deviation, 3.37. But I follow out things much the same. Margin of error is my t constant, 2.06, times my mean, excuse me, times my standard deviation, sorry, <laughs> over the square root of how many data points there are. We can use the calculator much the same way as we did before. And I'm going to get a margin of error of 1.36. To find the lower confidence level, we subtract that from our mean. To find the upper, we add. I'm going to run out of room to write it here, so I'm going to go ahead and write it right down below. My lower is 5.02, and my upper is 7.74. From there, you should be able to answer the other questions as to what your confidence interval contains and which has the smaller margin of error, recalling that we calculated the margin of error on the way to finding the confidence level. Remember, it is very possible for everyone to have different data and different values depending on your individual dice rolls.